That's quite enough of that, don't you, inquirers? Gets rid of these. Look at these both at the same time. Put that down there. Crash. Down there. Welcome. Did you see those dinosaurs? Wow. I love dinosaurs. I do. Especially this one. This is my favourite. This is Ankylosaurus. This one. I think it's a Tyrannosaurus, but it's got a pointy bit on its head, so I don't really know. If you know what that is, do let me know. Anyway, we're not talking about dinosaurs today, but they wanted to come and say hello, so I thought it best to let them. You never argue with the dinosaur, inquirers, especially one with big teeth. Arr! I'm going to put them over here. We will have a look at them later, though, because they're quite important later on. I'll put them over there. Uh, oh! <clears throat> Behave. How are you today? Well, I can't hear you because I've not plugged my potato phone in, but we'll get to that very soon. Today, inquirers, by popular demand, and by popular, I mean thank you, Ethan, for suggesting this topic to us here at the laboratory. We're going to cover volcanoes and volcanoes. What's the difference, I hear you ask? Well, one of these words has got an E in it. You can say either. You can spell either. It doesn't matter. How confusing is that? Anyway, let me remind you who we've got here on the table. We've met the dinosaurs. They're safe over there being good. Here's Basil. Now, the regular uh, viewers, of course, will remember that uh, Basil was on holiday last week in the kitchen, weren't you, Basil? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And did you have a nice time? Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's lovely at this time of year, the kitchen, isn't it? Oh, yes, 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 yes. And last week we had a uh, little forget-me-not was in, uh, in Basil's place. And forget-me-not's a lovely, very engaging little plant. But she drops blue flowers everywhere she goes. And the head elf and I have been hunting all over for these little bits of flowers and, and shooing them out of the door. Took a long time. We have the potato phone, the magical, mysterious potato phone, through which I hear you shouting at your uh, your screens as you uh, tell me all of the answers, and we'll get to that very soon. But before we do that, a quick happy birthday. Happy birthday to lovely lady Laura. It's your birthday today. Well done, you. Congratulations on your big day. I hope you have lots of cake and balloons. Um, we're going to look at your homework now. I've got some fabulous homework. So let's dive into the board and find it. Hmm, what's in here? I have it. I have it. I have it. So last week, you recall, we learned all about bread and other baked goods, although not croissants. I still haven't found out how croissants are made. It's a mystery. Any croissant bakers out there, please do let me know. I've 
he's keen to learn here at the laboratory. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you a few of the cake designs that I have. Cake designs. I didn't mean to say that, but I probably should have. This is the first from uh, G Dad. Again, a splendid effort here uh, from, uh, from from Captain G Dad and uh, his crew. And look, we've got a cake sandwich. How amazing does that look? It's on white bread, uh, so maybe not the healthiest option. And uh, it's got cake in it, so it's not going to be very good for our teeth, is it? Hmm. So, uh, cake sandwich, which looks wonderful. Until you notice, what's all these? What are these stripy things? I, I think he I think he left the paper cases on. Imagine that. Oh, cake sandwich. <laughs> but let's let's assume it's just the ripples on the sponge, shall we? Who have we got next? Elsa sent in a fantastic feast of a sandwich. Dead a load of that. Look at that! It's a macaroni cheese sandwich. Wow! I love sandwiches. I love cheese sandwiches. I love macaroni. I love macaroni. That's going to be an amazing sandwich. However, we must be very wary, must we not, inquirers, of the degree of sog. It could be very soggy with the cheese sauce. So I would imagine it best to use thick bread and to toast it. And you can see here Elsa has done a lovely sort of brownie toasty pattern on it. So I think that's probably what she had in mind. Thank you. Beautiful pictures, one and all. What else have we got here? Special delivery today we had from Ethan. Thank you, Ethan. A banana and peanut butter sandwich, colour coded, so you can tell which is banana and which is peanut butter. Wow, I bet that tastes amazing. I love bananas. I love peanut butter. I love sandwiches. I think it's going to be a winner, don't you? Uh, we'll have to give that a go at some point or other. Uh, and Caleb, Caleb, again, another inspirational piece here. This is cheese, lettuce and tomato sandwich on brown. Imagine putting cheese, lettuce and tomato in the same sandwich. Mwah! I love it. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to trying that one, too. Uh, before we get on to the, the laboratory uh, submission, I have to show you one on my mobile telephonic communication device. Wake up. Uh, because uh, we had a, a late entry and we, we didn't manage to get it to the uh, to the printing device here uh, at the, uh, the laboratory. So let me try and find it for you. Well, this is fun, isn't it? Watching a man play with his phone. Here we are, I'm playing with my phone. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, so... This is a picture. I don't know if you can see it. I hope you can. Here it comes. Boom. It's quite hard to see, isn't it? Because uh, it's on my funny little phone. Ah, there, that is a pie. Oh, already we like it. Pie, strawberry, and sandwich. Oh, look at that. It's got pudding inside it. A main and a pudding. Mwah. So thank you, Seth, for sending that in. A little bit more haste next week, if you don't mind, and we can print it out at the laboratory. What's left? What is left is our own uh, laboratory uh, staff here. Uh, oh, something fell off it, head elf. Uh, more glue next time, I feel, may be warranted. Basil, excuse me, please. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, my dear friends, is a sandwich uh, made bright here by a young master, Eli. And you can see on brown, ooh, brownish, maybe granary bread, I think, here. And we've got a ham and a, a sort of coloured chocolate sweet. I don't know if I can tell you what brand it might be, but they're quite small and coloured. And they've got chocolate inside, a crispy, sugary shell. Wow. And I thought, that looks amazing. And I said, head elf, I'd love to try one of those. And what happened? Look, inquirers, behold the beauty of a ham and unnamed chocolate crispy sweet sandwich. Shall I try it? Shall I? I'm going to try it. Already. A one, a two, a three. Ooh. Oh, that's delicious. Mm. Oh. Excuse me, I'm eating. How rude. Mmm. That tastes like a ham sandwich with some kind of chocolate on it. And I'd have to tell you, it's really rather nice, but probably not very good for you. Don't eat too many. Right, let's get stuck into some learning, shall we? A bit of learning. We're going to learn about volcanoes. 
What's the first thing we need to think about in terms of volcanoes? Let us think. I think they're hot. Are they hot? I think they're hot. Oh, a bit of sandwich in the beard. So why don't you get ready to shout? I hope you've all got your ties around your heads, by the way. Very important. Mm, very important. Let's put our little earpiece in. I'm going to switch the potato one this week. Don't let me forget inquiry. It's a little bit wrinkly now. We're in the, are we in the seventh week or the eighth week? Oh, I don't know. Uh, the term is going on fast, isn't it? We'll keep going uh, till, till, you, till you're back at school, I think. Uh, hopefully the potato will survive that long. So let's have a big shout. I, after, after three, I want you to shout volcanoes. Or if you don't shout volcanoes, shout volcanoes. Okay? One, two, three. It was loud. Oh, goodness me. Well, thank you. We're all sound checked in there. I think I heard everyone. So, yes, I heard you as well. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're a bit late. I still hear it. It's fine. Fine. Not a problem. Let's erase this because I need to ask you some things now about hot things. Talk. Right. Now, shout outs to me. Very loudly, remember. It's very important you shout loudly. So shout something that you think is hot. Fire! Oh, well, of course. Phew. I thought, I thought there was one behind me. Do shout out if there is. Fire, of course. We can imagine some burning wood. Uh, fire there. Of course, we know fires are hot. And all these things, of course, are very, very dangerous. What else is, what else is hot? Tea! Tea is hot. Well, you've got to be very careful with a cup of tea. I'm always very careful with my tea, inquirers. Uh, it's here uh, in the pot. I've just made some hot water and I'll leave it there to cool a bit so it's good and safe. Uh, what other things are? Vol thank you, volcanoes. Of course, volcanoes. In the hot bit of a volcano isn't all the rocky bit. It's the stuff inside. And the stuff inside is made of something called magma. What a great word, magma is magma, magma, magma. Say it, it's wonderful. Mm, mm, good, I heard that. Well done, good. What else is hot? Curry? Yes, yes. Thank you for that. That's an unusual uh, answer, but uh, curry is indeed hot. We'll talk about the differences between hot and hot uh, in a little while, but you're right. Rockets, thank you. That's what we started with, isn't it? All those weeks ago, we looked at rockets and we saw they have big, hot, burny engine things uh, to make sure that uh, there's enough power to push the thing off up into space. Good. Rockets. Anything else? The sun. Of course, the sun. The sun is very hot indeed, isn't it? Good and hot. We like uh, a bit of warm sun, but nothing too hot. Uh, what else have we got to think about here? Let me just have a look. Uh, I, I, cause I asked myself the same question. Radiator. Do you have a radiator? Inquire a, a thing in your house that, uh, hello, what's up with the chalk here? That's odd. Radiator. A thing in your house that gets warm or hot and makes the house nice and cosy. Hmm, lovely. So what I want you to tell me right now, which of these is the hottest? The sun. So the sun is the hottest. And I will consult my list of temperatures now. Sun is 5,500 degrees. <whistles> hey, that's pretty hot. You burn your fingers on that and no mistake. Uh, what comes next? What to Shout out what you think comes next. Yes, it is. A rocket. So the rocket uh, is about 3,200 degrees. That's very, these are very rough figures, by the way, and they've not been tested here at the laboratory. We haven't got a very long thermometer shoved out into space to poke into the sun, and if, even if we did, it'd melt. So uh, there's other ways of guessing uh, and determining that, which we don't need to worry about here at the laboratory. We've got other things to think about. Uh, what comes next? On the list here, it's curry, but I don't think curry is the hottest thing next. What's the next hottest thing? Yes, it is. It's magma. Now, looking at my, I've got a big list of temperatures here for things you might have said. Magma is 1,000 degrees. These are all in Celsius, by the way, in case you're wondering what a Celsius is. It's like a centigrade. Hmm. So, uh, magma, 1,000 degrees. That's very, very hot, isn't it? 
And then we come to all of the other things. And these are all kind of kind of in the same sort of range. These are thousands. These are very, 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 very hot. But these are things that we're probably more familiar with. So what temperature do you think a fire burns at, inquirers? Yes, it's cooler. It's 600 degrees. That's still hot enough to do a lot of damage. We don't go near a fire. And then a tea, a cup of tea. Now, to make a cup of tea, ideally, you want to be just under 100 degrees. 100 degrees is when water turns into steam. Just below that. Uh, and then a radiator. And I'll do curry as well. Because I think they're both about the same. They're both about 70 degrees. Now, you can't put food in your mouth that's at 100 degrees or 90 degrees. It can go, oh, it's too hot. And when it gets down to about 80 degrees, you go, oh, that, that's hot, but I'm going to carry on. 70 degrees, it's like, oh, that's hot food, but I can eat it. Now, curry, of course, has got spices in that make it taste kind of hot. But the actual heat of the food, generally, you'd hope around 70 or so degrees. Good. So these are all things that are incredibly hot. But if you want to find things on Earth that are naturally really hot, you're going to be looking at magma. OK, and that's what we want to talk about next. Dear inquirers, this mysterious material called magma. What is it? It comes from deep inside the Earth. What's the Earth? We live on the Earth, don't we, dear? Dear inquirers. And the bit that we know about is this bit on the on the top that's got buildings on, it's got trees on, it's got people on, it's got all sorts of things all over it. And as we dig down through the, the, the bit on the outside, we call this bit on the outside the crust, by the way, just like the crust on a loaf of bread. And a crust on a loaf of bread isn't very thick, is it? It's only the very, very thin bit. And so is the crust here. So this outer bit, uh, my dear friends, is called the crust. Now, Underneath the crust, we've got all these different layers, but basically the very middle bit is called the core, like an apple core, the middle bit of the of the fruit there. And uh, the, at the core in the middle of the earth is very, 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 very hot, but it's squashed very, 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 very tight down. And it's, it's made of, um, of nickel and iron. So it's a big, big solid core and there's liquid core around that. And then the next bit out is called the mantle. Now, magma is rock that's very, very hot, and it's turned into a kind of sludgy kind of liquid. And where we get magma is in a place down here. Now, the crust isn't very thick, okay? We've already said that. So, so far, we've managed to drill a very, very big, long drill, 12 kilometers deep into the earth. That's quite a long way, isn't it? But that's nothing compared to the size of the earth. Basically, that's 0.2% of the way to the center. Tiny little drilling holes, 12 kilometers deep. So it's a pretty big earth, isn't it? Now, what happens is magma is produced when you get hot rock. Now, let's do a little experiment. I know we normally do the experiment at the end, inquirers. This is a very quick one. Get one hand, doesn't matter which. Get the other hand, doesn't matter which. If you've only got two hands, this works perfectly. Three, I don't know what to do. Put one on the other and rub them. Now, what can you feel happening? Mm. Do they feel hot? They feel hot, don't they? Yes, they feel hot. Wow, mine are getting really hot. I'm going to stop because that's getting sore. So uh, when you rub your hands together, they get hot. Something called friction, rubbing against each other. So on the Earth, when we look at the surface of the Earth, the surface of the Earth is made out of these great big plates of rock, okay? And they're called tech. Tonic plates. What a great word. Tech. Ton. Ick. And what they do is they crash. They grind against each other. And where one of these tectonic plates goes on top and the other goes underneath, they rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub and rub. And, rub. and that's where we get magma, kind of this hot rock. And it kind of sits there underneath the, on the surface of the, of the earth. So when we ask what a volcano is, it's all it is, is a place in the crust of the earth. So here's the earth, there's a bump. And underneath here, there might be these tectonic plates doing their thing. There'll be this uh, region here of magma, okay? A chamber 
of magma. A chamber is just a funny word for a room. A chamber of magma, a chamber of horrors. Rawr! And a volcano is somewhere where that magma can come to the surface. And that's all it is. It's a weak point in the crust. And they're very, very dangerous, of course, because these magma chambers build up and they get really, really full of high pressure. And then all of a sudden the pressure's too much and boom, out it all goes. Oh, I just touched one of the delicate sealing apparatus in the laboratory. Oh, well, I'm very thirsty after all that. I'll disconnect my phone. I fancy a cup of tea. Shall we see what tea we've got today, dear inquirers? Let's have a little peek. So I have prepared myself a tray. Upon this tray, there is a teapot. We have today, to celebrate Basil's return, I've, thank you very much, Basil, borrowed a couple of leaves from Basil. Remember, only make tea out of things you know are safe to eat and drink, inquirers. This isn't safe to drink. Nonetheless, I'm going to have some. This is hot chili sauce. As we're looking at volcanoes, hot chili sauce. It'll make it feel hot. And here, this strange orangey brownie powder is smoked paprika. That'll make it taste smoky, like smoke, like hot, hot rocks. And then because lava, which is what magma is when it's flowing, is orange, I've got a chunk of orange. Yum, I love oranges. So let's see. What should we start with? Dun, dun, dun. Start with the paprika. Little spoon, little plate. We'll put a little bit of the paprika in. And we don't want too much because it can be quite overpowering. Um, but I've just gone ahead and put it all in. That's the kind of guy I am. Let's put the basil leaves in. Let's put the Tabasco in. Hot chili sauce. Not too much of this, inquirers. It's hot. That's quite a lot, actually. And finally, the orange. What I'm going to do with the orange, I'm going to do a squirt and a dunk and then poke it all in. Poke, 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 poke. And while that's doing its magic, infusing, I'm going to see if anyone's asked me any questions. Because I know sometimes people like to ask questions at this point. And I love getting your, your questions through email, of course. Um, oh, we've got a few here, haven't we? How does a volcano erupt? That's a jolly, jolly good uh, question. Uh, thank you again for that, uh, Seth. So uh, this pressure builds up. And in a, normally in a, in a volcano, in a crater, this magma chamber is kept very, very uh, tightly bottled up. And uh, when that pressure gets too much, it overcomes the mass of rock and cinder and ash and bursts out all of a sudden. One of the other things that really helps with an eruption is if there's gas. So if there's lots of gas and steam in here, it's making it, that's all kind of pushing together and making it uh, ready to burst. So uh, that's that's how a volcano erupts. We'll have a look at that later. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. What is the, oh, this is a complicated, a complicated question. Mm, I don't know if I know the answer to this one. What is the name of the type of rock dried magma forms? Well, that's a difficult one. Thank you, Tilda, for asking that one. The truth of it is, the type of rock it is, it's a great word, such a great word, I'm going to write it down, igneous, igneous rock, and it's burn, burning out magma that comes out and gets nice and cool. Now, it can form these strange rocks called pumice, and pumice is a great rock because it gets all these air bubbles inside it, and when it sets, it's a bit like a sponge, and it's a rock that can float. <laughs> How good is that? So, oh, I love it. Very good stuff. Uh, the other common rock, of course, is basalt, which is a big, thick black rock, and that's a wonderful, beautiful one. Uh, oh, my goodness, we've got lots of these. They're coming in uh, thick and fast. Uh, how is magma made? Oh, well, thank you for that, Rufus. A quality question. Um, I hope I explained it a little bit there. It's made by the heat of these plates sliding over one another. 
and this heat makes the the rock all melt and very it's very hot in the center of the earth so the rocks get a little bit of melt so in that little zone near the, the inside the crust there at the bottom that's where that magma forms and we get these uh, these these chambers of magma coming up through the earth good well i think that's enough questions for now do keep them coming in i'll i'll try and remember to get back to those at the end i'm going to enjoy a lovely cup of hot lava volcano tea so where's the cup here's the cup how good is that? Let's see. Do you think there will be colour inquirers or the usual insipid clear liquid? Let us see. Oh, it hath colour. It hath depth. It smells like a bonfire. Let's taste the tea. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, there's a bit heavy on the Tabasco there. Why do I always overdo these things? There's a taste of smoke. Mm. Hint of orange, hint of basil, but mostly lots and lots of Tabasco sauce. <laughs> Head elf, get the ice. Head elf. Oh, my goodness me. I'm going to have a bit more anyway. Mm. Ah, that's enough. There's dreadful tea. Please don't try and make that. You will regret it. It's awful. Right, let's return to the learning, shall we? Let's see enough of that. So what we know now, now know, know, what we know now, as we know, is there is magma inside the earth, boiling away, pressure building, ready to burst out. There's a weak point in the earth where this magma could possibly get out. And where it bursts out most of the time uh, is called a volcano. And there are, there's, depends who you ask how many types of volcano there are. But I think there's kind of three big differences between uh, three different types. Now, the, the big one, that, uh, the common one rather that we get is something called a cinder cone. And a cinder cone is, as you might expect, a sort of cone shape. Okay. So cinder cones are made out of cinders, which is kind of like little bits of clunky types of ash, those kind of things. So it's got a single vent at the top. It's in the shape of a cone, and it's got a crater at the top. If you were to draw <coughs> a classic volcano, that would be the shape that you draw a cinder cone. Cinderella. <laughs> Cinder cone, cinder cone, cinder cone. The next kind is a composite or a, a strato. Mm -hmm. So these tend to be huge. And they tend to have these little vents kind of sticking out at the side. So things go out of them or out of the top. Whereas the cinder cone, everything all comes out of that that hole in the middle, and then falls down as this kind of uh, cindery ash kind of thing. So with a composite, they've got very steep sides, and they get very, very high, okay? So these things can be, yeah, really high, maybe a, 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 almost a kilometre high, these giant, great big things, okay? So uh, in some cases, 2,000 metres high, very, very high, like proper big mountains, Whereas these things, they're probably only about two or three hundred meters high, so they're not massive. But the big ones here, uh, the, uh, the the uh, you can commonly refer them as strato uh, volcanoes, but technically they're composite. What they're the uh, reason they're called composite? They're made out of lots of layers of cinder, of ash, uh, all lava blocks, all manner of things thrown together. And when these things kick off, boom! Big mess. Big heat, lots of destruction, fire, all sorts of horrible, horrible things that you never want to see happen. Uh, and then finally, there's a thing called a shield volcano. And these are a very gently sloping thing, okay? And whereas these, these two types of volcano kind of blow, <laughs> shield volcanoes tend to just dribble a little bit. <laughs> shield. They look a bit like an old shield with a kind of like dome in the middle and then flatten on the outside. And the magma tends to just kind of gently flow down the sides and kind of build it and make it bigger. It's kind of a, I'd say it's a bit more of a peaceful volcano. But no volcano, of course, is peaceful. They can do horrific things. And let's talk about the horrific things. Because uh, although they're not very nice if you live near them, if you live far away, they can look pretty spectacular. 
if you ever do see a volcano, try and get far away from it. It's very important. So um, let's have a, a think then. There was a, a an island a long time ago, a great big island called Krakatoa. And uh, here's the sea all around it. It's basically a big volcano poking out of the sea. And this thing, it was 100, 100, 100, nearly 200 years ago. There's a head elf, head elf, head elf. Yeah, 150 odd years ago. Anyway, it blew up. And the sound from that explosion was so loud that you could hear it 3,000 miles away. And chunks, giant boulders flew off and they landed on other islands 50 miles away. Imagine that. You're sitting on your island, having a lovely time. Boom! Where's that boulder come from? Imagine that big smoking boulder landing in the garden. Well, I hope it doesn't uh, land near the laboratory. But we're not uh, 50 miles away from a volcano. We're much further away here at the laboratory. And we have vast bunkers uh, full of exciting equipment in which we could shelter. So apparently, because it was a long time ago, 1880, it's a very long time ago indeed. So we don't really know. But apparently it sent up all of this dust into the atmosphere and it made the moon look blue or green. How fantastic. Fantastic. Imagine looking up at the moon and it's blue, blue moon or green, like green cheese. That would be a wonderful thing to see, wouldn't it? Although slightly disturbing. Right. Well, I think that's enough about volcanoes. Well, uh, maybe if you've got any more questions, of course, send them in. I'll try and cover them at the end. But now it's time for our experiment. And no attempt at some kind of science experiment related to volcanoes would be complete without this. <sighs> no, that's just the basket of goodies we need. In fact, it's this. It is my homemade volcano. Hurrah, look at that. Classic uh, cinder cone, I think, here uh, with a vent at the top. Uh, and, of course, it's constructed from papier-mâché, torn up paper, a bit of flour and water, and you stick it all together. And then I painted it. I got so carried away, I even painted the, the plate. The head elf was a bit surprised about that, but uh, it, it'll wash off. It's washable paint. Now, I'm going to put dinosaurs on here because, of course, when the time of the dinosaurs, there were lots and lots of volcanoes around. So it will have been a common sight, some dinosaurs hanging around at the bottom of a volcano, uh, waiting for things to happen. Now, I've got this box here covered with a towel. Ooh, it doesn't sound very promising yet, does it? Uh, what's going to happen here? I'm moving everything out of the way. Ooh, there's the volcano. Oh, the dinosaur fell off. Oh, the dinosaur fell off. Here he is again. Rah, chasing the Ankylosaurus round. Rah, I'm going to get you. We'll leave them there. Uh, now, of course, I, I never test my experiments before they happen, just so that they're just as exciting for me as they are for you. And of course, that can mean sometimes a little disappointment, but let's see what happens. Now, in here, I've got things to make an explosion, hopefully, of some kind of lava. So the first thing we're going to need is bicarbonate of soda. And we need a, tea, a tablespoon. That's a tablespoon, uh, a big tablespoon of that. Now, I don't really know uh, how much of an explosion this is going to make. I'm going to gently help that in. Oh, goodness me, that's going everywhere, isn't it? Uh, never mind. A little bit of mess never hurt us, did it? <laughs> oh, get off, get off, get off. Right, so there's our, our baking, uh, baking, what's it called? Bicarbonate of soda. And I have a squirt of washing up liquid. I like a squirt of washing up liquid. Oh, there we go. And hopefully that'll make it a bit bubbly. Now, this isn't how real volcanoes work, but the reaction, the feeling, the, 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 the sudden release of gas, whoo, uh, hopefully will we'll mimic it. Now, of course, we want some lava. So I've got some, some of our orange paint here. Uh, pop. Orange paint. A blob of that. Uh, uh, come on. Oh, blob. Right. That's gone in. So there's a little bottle inside here, by the way, which is quite an important feature. Um, Paint. There you have some paint on you. There you are. You look better for a bit of paint, I always say. Uh, what else do we need? Let me look at my list. Baking soda. Did that. Washing up liquid. Did that. Blob of orange paint. Did that. Now we're going to pour in some vinegar. If you're interested in doing this at home, uh, try and take the cap off. Get a grown-up to do it. Or if you can't find a grown-up, get a monkey. Uh, we're going to put the vinegar into a jug. And we're going to have quite a lot of vinegar because I want to have lots of fun. 
<laughs> it's quite a lot of vinegar, isn't it? Right, now I must warn you, inquirers, I haven't tried this. One of two, one of three things could happen. Firstly, we could get a little explosion and it looks wonderful and everyone's happy. Two, nothing at all could happen. Disappointment all round. Ooh. Three, it could go everywhere, including uh, over you. So uh, if, that, if that happens, I'm going to move you out of the way pretty rapidly. So I'm going to tell you about next week before I do this, just in case it goes horribly, horribly, horribly wrong uh, in a way we want it to, don't we? Oh, okay, Basil, you can play. You can like some kind of big tree near the near the volcano there. That looks good, doesn't it? Right, got a towel here in case of uh, panic. So next week, we're going to look at blood and breathing. <sighs> blood and breathing. How exciting we're going to look inside the human body. Ooh, I can't wait to explore blood and breathing with you. And for homework. I would like you to make a model of a volcano out of anything you want. Papier-mâché, you can make it out of mud in the garden. You can make it out of uh, cereal, out of pasta, out of uh, some precious things you find uh, in a grown-up's bedroom. I don't mind. Make it out of dirty socks. <sighs> make an exciting model of a volcano. Take a photo of it and email it to me and I'll show everybody the amazing volcanoes that you've made. Right, so if it goes hardly wrong, it'll just end, okay? There'll be a mountain of mess and me going, ah, and it'll end. If not, we'll have a little chat in a moment. Are you ready for me to pour in the vinegar, vinegar, vinegar? Yes. <laughs> it works! It works! More! More! <laughs> wonderful! Wonderful! Oh no! I'm getting covered here! Oh. I love it! I love it! I love it! It tastes of vinegar! Mm, chips! 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 I can hear head elf giggling. It's a giggly sort, is the head elf. A bit more. I think a bit more. Now, what you'll see here, of course, is the magma kind of flowing down quite slowly. And that, of course, you remember, suspects a shield volcano kind of eruption. If it was from a cinder cone or even from, from one of the strata, the composite ones, we'd expect boom, splat all over the laboratory roof. And that would be a dreadful and wonderful thing to behold at once. Uh, I think I should have stirred it so we got a bit more of the orange paint. But... Um, that's pretty much a whole uh, whole bucket of vinegar, so that's not going to happen. Anyway, um, oh, don't drink vinegar. Oh, never drink vinegar. <laughs> tea, a bit of tea after the excitement. I enjoyed that. Do you know, I'm older than you think, and I've never done this experiment before, but it's wonderful. I want to do it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Excuse me. Mm. Right, so I've told you about your homework already. I've told you what's happening next week already. We've not made too much catastrophic mess. So I'll have a little check to see if there's any questions. Oh, what's your favorite volcano in the world? Wow, thank you, Rufus. That's a really amazing uh, question. I've got several favorite volcanoes I'd like to share with you. An intriguing one is a dormant volcano. So a dormant volcano is one that's fast asleep and it's not going to erupt, and it's very safe. And there's one in Great Britain, in Edinburgh. And you go to Edinburgh, and a big, big, uh, big hill. You can climb up the hill, and uh, it's, it's King Arthur's seat. And uh, up there, it's, it's an old volcano. And I love it there. So you can look out over Edinburgh. Beautiful. Uh, do that when you get a chance to go to Edinburgh. Go and climb a volcano. Um, I also visited one. Um, called Vesuvius. Vesuvius is in Italy. And it's massive, massive, and it's doing things all the time. So it's a little bit dangerous. Ah! And you go up it, and you walk right up, and you go all the way around this huge crater, and it's a bit of a smell. And, whoop, oh, a dinosaur fell over. Ah! There we go. Uh, so I'd say uh, I like Vesuvius. I think that was my favorite because it was a little bit dangerous, but at the same time, it was. Fantastic. A big, big volcano was very, 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 very exciting indeed. I loved it there. So thank you for that wonderful question. Um, I loved it. Uh, let's see what else we've got. Anything else on the old emails? Uh, what's this one? Do you get them under the sea? 
fire under the sea? Yes, you do. You get some huge volcanoes under the sea. Those tectonic plate things are underneath the sea. You get these bubbles. And what you get there is this hot magma bubbling up, coming out to the sea, going, it's cold here, and solidifying. And it forms these kind of rocks that look a bit like lumpy pillows. And if that keeps happening and happening and happening, then these sort of lumps get higher and higher and eventually poke out above the sea. And that's what happened here with this Krakatoa, with this volcano. It formed uh, under the sea and poked itself out and formed. And then when it got too big, it blew up. Wow. Oh, I tell you what, I need to lie down now. That was an incredibly exciting and overwhelming smell of vinegar and uh, singed dinosaur flesh. Uh, so... I hope you enjoyed today, uh, inquirers. I look forward to receiving your homework uh, and your wonderful models of volcanoes. Like big, like big models. Get some photos of them. I'd love to see those. And then next week, we will look at blood. Blood, blood, and breathing lungs. Air. <sighs> so uh, till then, I will bid you all a fond farewell, inquirers. Uh, keep inquiring. See you next week. Goodbye.